In this episode of the Android video camera application, we're going to learn how to create a camera device which represents the actual camera on your smartphone as such. <laughs> Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, we need to create a camera device. Before we can actually create connection to the camera itself, we need to set up a device that will needs to be used as part of the initialization and connection to the camera. Okay, so we'll just make a start on that. I'm trying to try and keep this tutorial nice and short. Okay, so we're going to need to create a camera device member here. And it's going to be of the type camera device. And it's just called an M camera device. Now, I'm going to need to set up a listener for that as well, for that camera device. And it's a state callback listener. So create a member for that. And I'll call it M camera device state callback. Now let's create an object for that. So we have it there, and let's complete that as such. Okay, if we look at the state callback, basically this will tell me when the actual this will return to me an actual camera device, a setup camera device for the specified camera. And so if you see on opened, you'll see that there's a camera device member returned back to me. And so I, I need to use that. So I'll assign that to my camera device member I created. Assign that to the camera. And that, that's all we need to do for the on opened overridden method. Okay, you will notice that we've got these two other overridden methods that have been created for us on the disconnect and on error. So in those particular cases, we want to clean up our camera device resources. So if we go down here, first thing we will just close the camera and then just set our camera device to null as such. And we've, I'm just going to copy these two lines and paste them down here. So we'll do the same thing to clean up if we get an error as well. Okay, so we don't want to occupy or consume memory if something does, does go wrong. So we're going to add those two lines here. And at the bottom here, I'm going to add another method called close camera, which does the same thing, frees up camera resources. Let's call it closed camera. So I'll do a check on the camera device if it's not equal to null. In other words, it's, it's occupying memory, it's got information in it. First thing we'll do is call M camera device close and then set cam M camera device to null. Okay, I want to create my, one more overridden method that's the opposite to the on resume here. So basically when we're switching to another application, it will get called and it's a good place to free up resources if we're no longer running our application or using the application. So it's overridden again. And it's protected. Void on pause. Let's fix that for typo for protected. Important here, I normally put call the super constructor after I've freed everything else up. So I call the super on pause down there. Now, um, now here's a good place because I'm calling pausing, moving the application. Here's a good place to close my camera and free up the resources as such. And I will conclude this episode at this stage. I just wanted to specify on creating the camera device 
and also freeing up the camera device resources at the end. We need to get the camera device set up before we can make a connection to our actual camera, which involves a bit more code. So I want to just focus on creating the camera device here for the Android Camera 2 video application. Anyway, that's it for this application. If you want to get notified of the next following tutorial to this one, click on that subscribe button. And if you want to get updated with all my news announcements and tutorial updates, you can see I've got my clickable on a PC links to Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and Google Plus as well. And straight above me is the website, my website. And I do encourage you, if you want to get more information, to visit the postings to these uh, tutorials, YouTube tutorials. Because not only do they uh, include the video, they also have the details of how you can get those changes from GitHub. As well as the code samples themselves and brief descriptions of what we're doing for those code changes. Anyway, that's it for this one. Bye for now.